Personally, I believe that if you jump up, you will come down. But if you grow up, you will stay up. So you don't blow, you grow. You don't blow, you grow. Everything that blows scatters and disintegrates. Oh. Balloons blow, bombs blow. We don't see anything but fragments. So when you blow, you scatter. Your relevance stops where your impact stops. So when you stop making impact, you stop being relevant. There are people that are just one eat wonders. They sang one song. They sang one song. And the whole world was cut. Where are they today? They are also because they just blew. They just blew. Without yeah. growing. So if you jump up, you will come down. But if you grow up, you will stay up. Yeah. You can make money fast. You can't grow money fast. You can make money on the fast lane. You can have an album and you make money, you can go for a beauty pageant or you go for a reality show mm -hmm. and you win 100 million. You have become rich but you are not wealthy. You have made fast money mm -hmm. but you have not built wealth. So you cannot build wealth fast. You can't grow wealth fast but you can make money fast. Wealth so making money. So making money is the elementary part of anybody, any stupid fool can make, can money. make money. But you can't become wealthy because you made money. When you are struggling, at that struggling time, yes. you must not do have survival mentality. You must have significance mentality. Survivor and significance. Yes. Even though you don't have money, you are poor, you are jobless. Mm. Your mindset should be, I want to make an impact. I want okay. to make a difference. I want to be significant. Not I want to make money. It is when you are now making impact, being significant, that you come out of survivor and become successful. The more you learn, the more you earn. Your earning capacity is determined by your learning capacity. If you know better, you will do better. So everybody has a level of money they can handle based on their internal capacity. If you give anybody any money that is beyond their learning capacity, they will waste the money and reduce it to their level. How can you become significant without trying to make money? That is the problem. Hi guys, welcome to another insightful episode of Solar Meditate, where we discuss topics that challenges your perspective and inspire growth. Today we'll be delving deep into a theme that resonates deeply with our society and landscape. Our discussion is going to revolve around the interplay of humor, entertainment and education, and also its impact on our youth and their mindset and aspirations. And also we'll be discussing also on business, generally growth, and generally your self-development. And my guest here is going to do justice to this topic. This is going to be one of the best videos you have seen in recent time. I can mean, assure you that this is going to be highly, highly impactful because my guest is a Jugano that will deliver, that will do justice to our today's discussion. But before I bring him in, I'm just going to do a little bit of his introduction. Dr. Olumide Oladako Imanu, popularly known as the Common Sense Guru, is no doubt one of the world's leading relationship experts motivational speakers and wealth creation agents with over three decades of transforming lives. His influence spread across the religious and secular arena and he is an apostle in the marketplace with an executive master's degree in business administration from the University of Huddersfield in the UK and a real estate executive certificate with a special focus on capital markets, project finance and business strategy from the prestigious Harvard Business School in the United States and a doctorate degree in entrepreneurial leadership. Dr. Lumide Emanuel is a leading voice for personal, corporate, and national transformation. He's a best-selling author of over 50 books, a media personality with nine subsidiaries, and a global footprint. No one encounters him and stays the same. He is married with children. That last statement is actually the bone of this discussion. No one encounters him and stays the same. Some of you may have known him, and then maybe some of you that don't know him, you're going to know him here in a very different way. So, guys, make welcome. A very powerful special guest here, Dr. Olimide Imanu. Thank you very much thank for having me. It's nice thank to be on your platform. Thank you and, yeah. so much. Thank you so much. Now, I like to, first of all, before I get into the eligibility of my discussion, I'd like to, first of all, hear the background story of my guest. So maybe you can share a little bit of your story, your background story. Okay, well, uh, well like you said, my name is Olumide Emanuel. I'm a Nigerian and um, I'm married with children. I was born in Lagos, Nigeria, as the firstborn um, in the family. So I have siblings uh, all together, plus adopted and everything, eight. So we adopted some people uh, that became part of the family. So, and schooled in Lagos uh, at the elementary part of my school. So primary schools in Lagos, secondary school in Kwara State. Uh, Polytechnic in Ogu State, other courses, but within and outside the country. 
Uh, I'm a pastor, I'm a businessman. What else? I'm an author and uh, I'm just a citizen of Nigeria playing his part in trying to see how we can make our nation and our world a better place. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. this, this is good. Now, firstly, you know, in this world, in the, in the world we're in now, as of the days, coming back from the time of old, comedy and pranks and all those sensory content has not, become, has not proliferated like what it is today. And what's your perspective generally? What do you think is the impact of all the kind of comedy content and the pranks and all the entertainment that's gobbling up, that's coming up in vogue in our right. Oh, well, well uh, we need comedy, we need humor. Um, yes. Laughter is important. Uh, smiling is important. You need more muscles to frown than you need to smile. So when you smile, at least if there's anything you can give, you can give a smile. It's free of charge. So humor is important. Laughter is important. And um, it may not be as popular as it is now in those days, but it's always been there because in palaces, you have jesters. So we have palace jesters, um, people that when the king wants to laugh, when the king has you know visitors, they will bring them to just come and jest, crack jokes, make people laugh. So there's absolutely nothing wrong in, in, in that. However, um, for everything that is good, excess you know, becomes a problem and you know, perversion becomes a problem. So in the world today, especially because of all the social media yes. and the monetization yes. of the social media platform, we now have a lot of people that have taken it to you know, the extreme because I'm aware that there are a lot of all these um, pranks that go on that are really very, very dangerous. And um, it's, it's not something that we should encourage. Uh, but comedy is good. Comedy is needed. The, the way things are in our nation and in our world today, uh, people are already traumatized. Yes. People are going through a lot. So at least you cannot now take laughter away from us again. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we need to laugh. We need to at least uh, laugh and relax. Yes. So, but this, um, you know, excesses and the dangerous trend is not, is not okay. And when you talk about the effects on young people, you see, a young mind is an impressionable mind. And most of the time, young people don't know that this is a joke. For instance, when you look at acting, yes, yes. we have a lot of actors that we love. We have a lot of actors that we hate. Mm, Why yeah. do you love them? Yeah. Why do you hate them? They don't, you don't know them. Even you don't know them. Not but by them. virtue of their acting, they say, that is a witch. <laughs> and there have there been stories of actresses mm. that were physically assaulted because they thought that because they are playing witch, they are a witch, true, they true. Witch. Because they are playing prostitute in a film, they are prostitute. So that shows you how people don't even know the difference between reality and you no know, truth believe. anymore, make believe anymore, and that is why you have a lot of people that are now seeing some of these jokes mm -hmm. and some of this as reality. Yes. People come up, in fact, the level of creativity now is something else. Something. People come up with some story, and like ah, ah. you sometimes you ask yourself, you mean people just sit down, cook up a lie like this, and they, before you know it, they will believe a lie is the truth. Mm -hmm. And yeah. in the world that we live in right now, it's something that we all need to be careful of. So that's why, for me as a person and for people within our community, we have told people. Don't ever be a part of sharing, liking, subscribing to anything you are not sure is the truth. Mm. Because you can push a lie. Nations have been, politics, elections have been lost mm. by rumor. Yes. Marriages have been destroyed by rumor. Businesses have gone bankrupt by rumor. Yeah. By the time you now come back to say it's a lie, mm. nobody will listen again. Yeah. So while I believe in humor, I believe in laughter, I believe in comedy, I believe in joy, mm. I don't believe that we should pervert things or do anything that will be detrimental to our environment or to the well-being of people. Excellent. Now, Niger Nigerians or people generally want to blow in a hurry. And it seems like those those are the easiest route of it. So what do you recall, what do you advise? Because most people now, it looks like because of how the country is now, or recession or hard times and all of that, people just say the easiest route is maybe content, entertainment and all of that. And the place is being inundated every day by day with all sorts of content and different form of things. Now, what are the other ways or advice that you think people can go around things because they want to grow very fast or they want to blow, they just want to make money quickly? Well, things like that. well, personally, I believe that if you jump up, you will come down. Mm. But if you grow up, you will stay up. So you don't blow, you grow. You don't blow, you grow. Everything that blows scatters and disintegrates. Uh -huh. Balloons blow, bombs blow. We don't see anything but fragments. Mm. So when you blow, mm. you scatter. After a while, you will not be there forever because nobody reigns forever. 
So if you blow, you end up like a vapor. But if you grow, you end up like a tree. What's the difference? Now, a vapor disappears and dissipates in seconds, in, in a matter of time. But a tree continues to bear fruit in season, from season to season. So you see those that blow without substance, those that blow without a process, they disappear with time. You don't hear about them anymore. Mm. But there are people that have been in the same industry, in the mm. same sector, mm. for decades. And they are still there because they grew into it. They didn't just wake up one day and just got there. So mm. for people that want to create wealth, you see, wealth creation is something that I'm very passionate about. I've studied it globally mm. um, uh, and extensively. And I've come to realize that the principles that governs wealth mm. is universal. Principles are universal. universal and everybody. it's universal. And when it comes to wealth creation, the principles that help people to become wealthy is also universal. But you see, the application of those principles, they are personal, mm. contextual, and geographical. Mm. So even though it's a universal principle, when you want to apply it, you have to apply it on your own personal level, mm. looking at your context and looking at your geography. Yes. So anyone that wants to create wealth should realize that money only flows in exchange for value. Okay. Money flows in exchange for products and services. Money is a reward for solving a problem. Yeah. So look at the environment you are in, what are the problems that you can solve. Solve the problem, money will come, and you create wealth by managing the money that comes to create other money. So people should realize that, uh, you see, there's what we call herd mentality, mm, yeah. like a bandwagon effect. Yeah. When everybody's yeah. going in one direction, everybody's everybody just go direction. into yes. the same direction. And at the end of the day, oh, oh, within a few years, yeah. you see that the whole thing is messed up. So I believe very strongly that those that want to build lasting wealth mm. and make lasting impact should identify their gifts, their talent, and their potentials, mm. should spend time to develop themselves to become skillful, and then deploy it with the mindset of impact. And money will flow as a result of that. Mm. Because if you go out looking for money, money has wings. Mm. It can yeah. fly away. But if you go out looking for impact, money will continue to come. Because money is just a reward for mm. the problems that you solve and for the value that you offer. Wow. Now, are there particular examples of you have people that you feel that they just blow? Because you say when you when you blow, you dissipate. But when you grow, you stay. Well, what are the particular examples of people that you know that they just blow up and they dissipate within a few Okay, I'm not going to mention them, but you will yeah. know them. Look back in the last 30 years. All the musicians that you know that have became rave of the moment, where are they today? Wow. I'm but sure. we, still, we still have some people that have been singing for 50 years and they are still alive and they are still, and they are still singing trending. look into comedy think back in the last 30 years all the people used to hear their name where are they today mm. but there are still people that have been there and they are still there look into nollywood look look into football yes it's true look into football people that used to play uh -huh. now how many of them are you still hearing their name in the last um, game that they played this last one that they finished mm. not too long ago yes. you find out that in that game, we still saw a lot of old players coming there to yeah, watch at the stadium. Some people are now coaches. Yes. All the people that played with those people in those days, where are they now? They are still alive, but why are they no more relevant? And it's true. So, your relevance stops where your impact stops. Your relevance stops where your yeah, impact, impact stops. Stop. So, when you stop making impact, you stop being relevant. There are people that are just one eat wonders. Yes. They sang one song. They sang one song. And the whole world was... Where are they today? Yes, and so because yeah. they just blew. They just blew. Without yeah. growing. So if you jump up, you will come down. But if you grow up, you will yeah. stay up. So they are, I don't need to mention that everybody knows there are people that they have made the kind of money they have made in their lifetime. Yeah. You will never believe that they will be poor. And but today, possible. many of them are, they are, they are poor so because... it's not possible mm. to make fast money. To make, like there's a book that they say, The Millionaire Fast Lane. And what it teaches about is generally how you can be able to follow the fast lane rather than following the long grain. So it's not possible to make fast work because when you talk about impacts and when you talk about people that will reign and pass, most of the people, like the football as you mentioned, football has a season, it's seasonal. So if I'm going to choose a field or a niche, maybe I should not go to something that will not be seasonal. Music, well, some, like you said, there are still some that are still trending to today. So is it possible to grow wealth fast? Fast lane. This is this is tech generation. People make money fast. Okay, so you so know, I'm long process. I'm very particular with the use of words, and um, you have used two words that are different. So I will need to break it down. Okay. At the beginning, you said, "Is it possible to make fast money? Yes. To make then now is, you now said, "Is it possible to grow fast?" So there are two differences. Okay. You can make money fast. You can't grow money fast. You can make money on a fast lane. Mm. You can have an album. And you make money. You can go for a 
beauty pageant or you go for a reality show mm -hmm. and you win 100 million. Yes. You have become rich, but you are not wealthy. You have made fast money, mm -hmm. but you have not built wealth. So you cannot build wealth fast. You can't grow wealth fast, but you can make money fast. Well, so making money, so making money is the elementary part of anybody, any stupid fool can make, can money. make money. But you can't become wealthy because you made money. There are people that have made money, but they are still poor. So making money is nothing. Anybody can make money. Once you are working, you make money. Once you are any side, you are making money. But can you manage the money? Can you multiply the money? That is where so true wealth is not cash based. Okay. True wealth is asset based. So you can be rich, uh. yet you are not wealthy. To be rich is to have cash. To be wealthy is to have substance and to have assets that continues to produce without you having to work. Oh, okay. I think I'm getting a difference now. So, so wealthy is about having asset and substance. So when you say somebody is wealthy, yes. they don't need to work. Oh. They are, the money is working for them. That means they are built a lot, a lot of assets. assets. Because in the world of finances, mm. I don't know, this is not a financial program, but let me try to educate people. Yes. You see, in the pyramid of wealth, yes. you have five self top people. Okay. The first set of people you have are what we call people that are in financial crisis. Financial crisis. They are at the bottom of the triangle. They are in financial crisis. Nothing is working. They don't even, some of them don't even have a job. They are begging. They are Gen 2K, mm. help me. Yes, like, can yes. I say my account number? Mm. Poor people. But next to that are people that are in what we call financial instability. They are not in crisis. Some of them work, but maybe they earn 50000 By the end of the month, they have borrowed 20000 mm. So by the time they collect the next fifty, they return. So they are, the money they, are, they take home cannot take them home. Mm. They are making money, but mm. the money is not enough for what they need. So they are unstable. Because, yeah, money is coming, today, but it's not enough. Today, market, so tomorrow, maybe you sell market today, tomorrow you didn't sell market. Sell market. Uh, go this. So they are unstable. Then there is the third set of people, they are in what we call financial stability. Now, these are people that we call middle class, lower, upper class. Yes. They are working, they have good salaries, mm. the money can take care of them, they have a house, they might even be landlord, they have cars, they travel abroad, they are children in private school. These people are financially stable, okay. but they are the most deceived set of people. In that triangle, you know why? Deceived. Yeah, they are deceived because why? they think that all is well, but all is not well. Because oh, one okay. major thing about them is the That's reason right. why they are stable is because they have a good source of income. Oh, but the day they lose their job in three months, they are poor. They are good, they have gone down. So you see a lot of all these people that like you say these are big boys, they are just they are just poor people. Why? Because once they lose their job now, in mm. 90 days they are poor. Yes. Because everything that they are having mm. is based on the income that is coming. So every month, maybe they earn 3.5 million, 5 million, 6 million a month. Yes. So they can even have a house. They are paying mortgage or they even buy a house or build over time. They have cars. Mm. They are traveling abroad. They, are, they have some money in their account. So they think that they are big. But yeah. let one hit crisis hit them. They are back to instability. Let them lose their job. They are back, back to instability. instability. Wow. Then we now have the people that are in financial independence. Okay. That is when you start talking wealth. So you see, at that time, you are talking about, at that point, when you are in financial independence, you have come to a point where you have enough assets that the that money that is flowing from the assets can take care of everything you need and more. Whatever crisis so you work, oh, you know work, oh, money is coming. Do you understand now? Mm. So you are now in financial independence. But there's another realm ahead of that is called financial freedom. Wow. So when you now enter financial freedom, it means that it's not only about you. Mm. If you decide to take care of 1,000 people every month, because life is all about impact. You start out with survivor, mm. you become successful, then you move to significance. Oh. But in order for you to come out of survivor, mm. you must have significance mindset at the point of survivor. That's what takes you to success. Wow. So wow. those are the things that a lot of people don't understand. So mm. when you get to financial freedom, it's not about because life is about impact. You are too small to be the purpose of God for your life. How many cars can you drive? How many clothes can you have? So really, life is about impact. Money is a reward for solving the problem. And money is a tool for the fulfillment of purpose. So money is nothing but a tool to make impact. So mm. at that point, that's why you have rich people today that have foundations giving billions away. Mm. Mm. And they are still rich. Mm. Why? Because they are in financial freedom. So, But a lot of people are so struggling. They are at the survival level. And they want to blow. But you see, the reason why they cannot become significant is because you don't blow. You grow. When you are struggling, mm. at that struggling time, yes. you must not do have survival mentality. You must have significance mentality. Survival and significance. Yes. Even though you don't have money, you are poor, you are jobless. Mm. Your mindset should be, I want to make an impact. I want okay. to make a difference. I want to be significant. Not I want to make money. It is when you are now making impact 
being significant that you come out of survivor and become successful. How can you become significant without trying to make money? That is the problem. You are not supposed to be looking for money. You are supposed to be looking for problem to solve and impact to make. You see, value mm. is meeting need, solving problem, mm. answering question. So, I'm a poor man. I live in a face where I face you. Mm. I'm squatting with three people. Mm. I don't even have money to buy toothpaste. Mm. I'm jobless. Mm. But in my mind, I want to make impact. So, on that, in that compound, mm. when you say, we need somebody to volunteer to go and be paying Nepal Bay for us. So, oh, since I'm available, I will do that. You are making impact. Ah, ah, we need to do roster to sweep. Oh. Mm. Uh, some people will sweep in the morning. You say, no problem. Mm. When is your turn to sweep? You sweep. On the street, they say they need people for vigilante that wake from 3, 3 to 6 a.m., 2 to hours every night. You volunteer. Mm. Why? You don't have money. You are a poor man, but you are making impacts. Because you may not have money, you have brain. You may not have money, you have time. You may not have money, you have energy. You may not have money, you have life. But people, they, I can't come and keep myself. I beg. Yeah. That's why you are still poor. Because nobody will know your value if you don't offer it. Oh. It is as you are doing that without money. They say, ah, okay, one of you that have been volunteering. One day, somebody will now come and say, ah, who are the people? Say, ah, okay. Who are the people that have been doing this job? Ah, they are volunteers. I say, what do they, we don't pay them. They say, hey, ah, okay, let me give them this money. Oh, they do, you don't have a job? Ah, come and work here. That's how it starts. But because we are always thinking survivor, I can't come and kill myself. Have you ever asked yourself, why are people at the bus stop and at the garages? They say they are area boys, they are garage boys. Mm. And they are there all their life begging for money. Ten years later, they are still there. Fifty years, they are still there. They are still there. Why? Do you think that's their destiny? It's because they are thinking survivor. I just want to eat. I just want to eat. Once they start thinking significance and they start thinking impact, they will not be there for too long. Or do you think the country has made it become that way that people think of survivor these days? Now look at look at the current uh, state we're in. Recession back and forth, hardship left, right, and center. Look. So if someone is thinking of the next daily bread, how, your mindset will not be going towards thinking of what you're going to do rather than what you're going to have for that daily bread. Now you see, there's what you call the Maslow's hierarchy of need. Mm. And many people don't understand why that came up. You see, Maslow mm. in his days, mm. the UK is not different from this one. Because many of you don't study history. And because we don't study history, we think that there's one special thing about Nigeria. Mm. For instance, let me just digress, I'll come back. Uh, we had a very sad episode of one of our major icons that died in a helicopter crash in America. And when they told when they announced, they announced, okay, the investigation is going on. It will take one to two years to complete the investigation to know the full report. If it is Nigeria, that that thing happened. And they said they will take one to two years. The whole social media and all of them don't they talk rubbish. Hey, how can they take two years? Hey, maybe they kill up. They don't they talk rubbish. But because it's America now, nobody's talking. We are just a bunch of unserious people. We don't love our country. We are not patriotic. That's why you are thinking that one country is better than your own. Nigeria is one of the best countries in the world. It's because many people have not gone around. Nigeria is one of the best countries in the world. Yes, we have bad leaders, we have bad environment, but that doesn't mean that all of us will be cursing the country. So let me go back to so Maslow. Mm. In when England was like this, mm. when human being America was like this, they were worse than us. Mm. Go and do your research. It took years for them to come out. Yes, it's taking us long. We are not having the right kind of leader, but all of us must play our part. So Back to Maslow. So Maslow was trying to find out why do human beings behave like this? That was what he was trying to find out. That was the thesis. Why do human beings behave the way they behave? Mm. And in doing the research, he now realized that, ah, see massive human being are in category. Mm. Mm. That some people, they are survival level. All they are thinking of is what to eat, what to drink. So he now realized that when people are at that survival level, they are not different from animals. Mm. Why? Because an animal... When you are thinking survival, your survival instincts will kick in. You don't care who dies. You don't care who is defrauded. Yes. You don't care who is hot. Yes. You just want to eat. Want to it's eat. an animalistic behavior. Wow. So many of us in Nigeria, we are behaving like animals. Why? Because we are at the survival level of us. So we are not different from animals. That's why you see what's happening on social media. You, you make a statement. The next thing, they are insulting you. They are cursing you. Mm. They have not even read what you wrote. But it's the frustration. So when you see all this frustration on social media, it is not because they hate you. It's because they hate themselves. People project themselves in their words. They project themselves in their behavior. They project themselves in their beliefs. They project themselves in their action. So all those things you see on social media, 200 naira recharge card, mm. they are insulting people on Twitter, mm. cursing everybody. They are frustrated people. It's not different from animal. Now, you have now realized, look at what happened in COVID, look at what happened in America. We have now realized that whether it's America, South Africa, Brazil, mm. London, there is riot everywhere. Human beings are the same. 
human beings are the same. So it's not about, but anywhere in the world, principles are universal. Mm. Anybody that came out of problem, they had to change their mindset first. True change begins from the inside. You must change inside before there can be external change. The problem is we are looking for change externally. We are not ready to change. And that's a major problem. So, for instance, I've, I've read, of course, you said I've written so many books. I'm very passionate about national transformation. Mm -hmm. But there cannot be national transformation without two things. Transformational leaders, patriotic citizenship. We don't have transformational leaders. We don't have patriotic citizens. And that's why we are where we are. Wow. Everybody's weight is like the chicken and egg. Leaders are waiting for the people to be patriotic. People are waiting for the leaders to be transformational. Nobody wants to do what needs to be done. But two wrongs does not make it right. Evil tribes when good men do nothing. Mm. And if you are not part of the solution, you are indirectly part of the it's problem. It's not supposed to start from the top. That is what you see. That's why the people at the top, why did they get to the top? Nobody now vote them. He, 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 now, look, let's look. Okay, right now, I don't know when this broadcast will come out now. Yeah. Right now, a man came out. He said, they look on. The present president, he said, the Milokon mm. is old. The second person, Atiku, old. The third person, Peter Obi, they say he's young. What is young about Peter Obi? But everybody in the whole country will reduce our choices to three people. Even quite console of them. All the people on that ballot, majority of the people we are all clouting for, they are all old people. They are all people that have ruled this country one way or the other, without a change. Yet, we, so even if it was, I will be you vote or Atiku, all of you are deceiving yourself because none of them can solve the problem of Nigeria. Now we have seen it. Very, with Buhari was like the worst administration ever. It's as if they took us like 30 years backward. Mm -hmm. Now, people are complaining. Very soon now, they will say Buhari is a good man. <laughs> that is because we are all confused people, because we are not facing reality. Look at what's happening in America now. When they started voting no people, America started going down. Going down. Donald Trump, old man. Now they don't bring by the old man. The man they fall, they sit down, stand up. Now they are trying to... So, it is not... As long as you are not doing the right thing. You see, I mean, look, everybody, they started doing tribalism. They are Igbo and Yoruba is fighting. We are just a bunch of confused people. These people are not enemies of themselves. They are just playing you as a pawn. APC is not the answer. PDP is not the answer. Labour is not the answer. Nigerians are the answer. The grassroots are the answer. But you are still expecting somebody to go there and do. So it's not starting from the top. It's bottoms up in this, uh, an environment like where we are. Because if we did bottom up, look, whether you like it or not, all these things, people will argue, they will talk and talk. It's normal. Let me tell you something. You get the leader you deserve. How now? So if the leaders force themselves into a position, how, did they, they, how they, did they force themselves? Through the electionary system. That Which, okay, the person in the electionary system, mm. why did he accept to be forced? All the people that were involved in whatever they were involved in, why did they accept? It's because they are all at that survivor thing, I'm telling you. He said, you don't need to. He said, let me tell you something. I can stand to tell you anywhere, quote me anywhere. Mm. There is a level of results that can never be rigged. Go and do your statistics. Study statistics. There is a, for you to be able to rig something, mm. there must be some things. On, there is a level things get to you can't rig it. No matter how much, it will be too obvious, too to, be obvious rigged. to be rigged. So let me give you an example with Lagos State. Mm. Lagos State now. In this local government where you are now, yeah. this is the largest local government in the whole of this country, where you are now, out of 714 local government. Now, the Lagos State Governor right now, and all the governors, there is no Lagos State Governor that has become a governor in this state with 5 million votes, not one. All of them have become governor with 1. something million votes, 2. something million votes. So question, Lagos has 20 something million people, and only 2 million people, 1. something million people voting a governor. Where are the other people? So, all of us will have PVC. When it's time to go and vote, you will not vote. You will say they will rig it. That's why they are rigging it. But the issue is that because sometimes it's just right results. No, you see, you, you see people, you people keep talking all these things. We, have, we are all in this country now. While I know that things are bad, it is not supposed to be as bad as it is if we are not bad. We are bad people. We are the ones that, you see, everybody gets tired easily. You want to fight a cause. You fight it to the end. Look, in Nigeria, I know there are problems. I'm not denying that there are problems. The justice system, I'm not denying what you are saying. But I'm telling you, that is what we have been saying. And that is what we have been seeing. Because that's what we have been expecting. And that's what we have been enabling. Mm. So if we want to see a change, we should change that narrative. So now explain to me how in Lagos, if we have 10 million people, mm. 
that are coming to vote. And those 10 million people are ready to vote and they all come out. And the people that have been rigging have prepared their 2 million people. If 9 million now votes for the other, other person, you won't see what to rig. Because most of those rigging, let me tell you, they rig with your name. Mm. You that didn't come out, they vote for you. Do you understand that? Because you did not come, so you actually are part of the riggers. Because they now they say, ah, these people have not come to collect them. So all the PVC women are not collect, then go collect them. Sir, but you were there in the election when they were trying to share PVC. They are not releasing the PVC, number one. Number two, there you saw the election where people do voting and everything, and it was clean, turn printed, this written result, all of it that would be was sticking to court and still cause this counter nasty. So I we everybody I'll... knows that and it was clear that in fact it's is is an open secret that it was OB that won the election but was stolen. Because of where, which open, which open secret? Where did it's it? clear now all the written papers. Okay, everything so that let was, me let me help you. How do you be able? How can you talk about uh, people doing something about it? When it was clear, people's so mind let me robbed, let me help and you. And the justice system did not help it. Let me help you. You see, you are wrong by saying that will be won the election. You know why? Because you are talking from evidence that you don't have. You are talking from emotion and sentiment. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Mm. Now will be won Lagos. Mm. So, how did he win Lagos? If they rigged the election in Lagos, how did he win in Lagos? The only way why he was able to win in Lagos is what I'm trying to tell you now. He was able to win in Lagos because it was so overwhelming that no matter how much Nadwan, the crowd that voted for him was so much that he won Lagos. But he did not win the election. If he won the election, you see, people don't understand the way law works. That's why you get angry, you get... Look, as I'm here now, mm -hmm. I don't believe in anybody. I don't believe in Tinubu. I don't believe in Atiku. I don't believe in Obi. I believe in God, in myself, and I believe in doing the right thing because I will not put my hope on any human being. None of them is better than themselves. You people are just being emotional for, no, for nothing. If you say somebody won, what is the evidence? You people were all there. If you don't have evidence, social media is not an evidence. You people are not, and you are the next generation. And if you people are still having this mindset, then the future is terrible. You people are being too emotional. You can never win a case in the court. Let me show you court. If you go to court now, mm. justice is blind, in case you don't know. You see the woman, then blindfold the high like this. That's the logo. Then it carry weights. What that means is, when you come before the court, it doesn't know whether you are male, female, or be, article, court, court. So the court is not aware. It is the evidence you present that they work with. So, look, I'm a pastor, in case you don't know. But let me tell you, I'm a pastor. I run an organization that is global. I'm also a businessman. I run an organization that is global. As I sit down here, I am not God. I don't know everything. Mm. I can only make decisions based on what they bring to me. So if there is somebody in the system mm. that says, ah, make an anointed pastor, present this one. It is what they present to me. I will use to make decisions. I will be a good man. I will be an honest man. I will be a righteous man, but I will make the wrong decision. Not because I'm a bad person but because I'm surrounded by people that did not play their part. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Let's stop blaming somebody else. Everybody play your part. When everybody play their part, after a while, evil is not that powerful. Mm. Darkness is the absence of light. There is nothing called darkness. There is, darkness does not exist anywhere. The absence of light is what reveals darkness. Once light, so it brings light out of darkness. When light shows up, darkness will disappear. The reason why we have the darkness is because we are still going on with all this rumor, assumption, emotion, and we are not being factual. I can tell you for free, Nigerian problem is a complex problem. Very complex. And as complex as the problem is, only one man cannot solve the problem. Put the most only man as the president of Nigeria. Nigeria will still not change. Because only one man cannot do it. Now you are talking of the man. House of Assembly with the buy car. His Labour Party not there. Why didn't they say we are not buying? All of you go and buy, want to buy you know, soon. Why did all of them collect money for gym? Everybody is deceiving them. They are not playing you people. These people are the same. They are not playing you people. So stop fighting for what you don't know. Don't be joining these people. I'm telling you, if this country is going to change, let us start from the grassroots. Do you know that even in primary school, in secondary school, they are worse than politicians? Mm. And you are blaming people at the top. Have you tried to go to campuses or go to school to see courtism on campus to see Amrobe? All the youths that are doing Yahoo, now president, they do Yahoo. We're just joking. If we begin to, this little light of mine, I'm going to lie, if you are a good person, mm. you, uh, your, your wife and children, let's be good though. That one doing home. Before you know it, that's how from bottom up. Before you know it, light will begin to rise. Darkness will be looking for where to hide. You don't go feel hide again. 
But everybody now, look, we are just fooling ourselves. I can tell you for free. Everybody now, you are praying, hey, and then if your brother become a governor today, you will be expecting him to drop something. Where do you expect him to see it? We are the leaders we deserve. Let's not fool in ourselves. We are not ready. Let's move on, my brother. Firstly, what are the five steps? Because what the whole of this and I'm seeing here now is mindset, mindset reform. What are the five steps people can begin to reform their mindset in order to begin to come out of poverty or things like that? Okay, well, if you tie it to poverty, then it will be a different answer. If you tie it to life in general, it will be a different answer. So let me try and merge things up. For anybody in this world to become the best version of themselves, mm. number one, it begins with a desire to be different. Desire to be different. You must have a desire that, look, I want to be different. I don't want to be like everybody else. I want to make a difference. I want to make impacts. I want to be a solution. I want to be an answer. It is that desire mm. that will make you to begin to now find out what you need to do. So that desire leads to information. You now need to have the right information. What do I need to do? Who do I need to become? How do I need to operate? Then that will now lead you to the sacrifice that is required. Because you can never win a prize for a price you did not pay. Can never win a prize for a price you didn't pay. So there is a prize to win for every price that is paid. If I pay for transport, I get a seat on the car. If I pay for food, I get a plate of... So you have to pay to win. Mm. So that third level is, I have a desire to make a difference. I'll find out what I need to do and I'll start paying the price. Mm. You have to now pay that price. Everything meaningful requires a sacrifice. You have to be ready to make the sacrifice to do that. Then once you have gotten to that level where you are making sacrifice, mm. you are beginning to make impacts. And then stay faithful and stay focused. Mm. Anything meaningful takes time to grow. Mm. Many times we are too much in the hurry. If you get crashed, you will crash land. If you appear before your time, you will disappear. So grow, take time, be focused, keep doing it. Many people you are having today, they've been there for 10 years, 15 years, 18 mm. years. Mm. You, you want to graduate in January, marry in February, become a father in March, become a millionaire in June. It doesn't work like that. You have to go through the process so that you become the person that can manage what you are asking for. So that let just stay consistent and then don't stop learning. Because the day you stop learning, you start dying. So in the world that we live in today, we have to learn, unlearn, and relearn continually. So what are the process of learning and unlearning? You see, when you talk about, I, I've said this over and over again, that if you are not informed, you'll be deformed. If you are not inspired, you'll expire. If you are not updated, you'll be outdated. If you are not in the know, you cannot be in the flow. What you know determines how far you go. Those who know, rule over those who do not know. So learning, unlearning, and relearning is you having a teachable spirit and having a willingness to continue to evolve and be a better version of yourself. Don't ever get to a point where you think you have arrived or you know it all. No, we don't know it all. Once you have that tabula rasa mindset, mm. clean slate, every time, you are, if I'm going into a place now that I've never been to before, mm. I enter with a tabula rasa mindset. What did that? I enter with a mindset of, I don't know, what am I going to learn yet? So as I enter, mm. I'll start learning from the decoration, from the way they do things. I'll start learning because I'm, I'm not going there thinking I know. If I'm about to meet somebody I've never met before, I go with the tabula and I say, ah, wait, I'll go learn for this man. No. Mm. Let me go and learn. No. Let me, I'll go there. I'll be learning. I'll be picking things. By the time I leave mm. and I'm telling people, did you notice? Say, How did you see that? It's because I went with an hunger. Mm. They didn't go with an hunger. I give you an example of something that happened just that I, I just replied an email less than one hour ago. And in, in replying the email, I was surprised because Someone contacted me and said, I need this, I need this, I need this. And I said, okay, get these two books. They will help you. Mm. Once you read the book, you will get the information you need. The person now replied me yesterday that I, you, I contacted you some time ago. You said I should get this book. I've read it all. Uh, so how can you help me? <laughs> <laughs> so I now realize. I just, I just laugh. As you are laughing, I had a laugh for you. I say, Kai! I can guarantee you, you didn't read the book. <laughs> because you can't read that book. So I now reply, I say, this is the first time <laughs> in my life that somebody will tell me they wrote, they read those two books and you are still asking the question. So I really don't know your question. That's so the help you are talking, explain the help. Let me know. Because that's a book that has produced millionaires in this country, billionaires in this country. Is the information that changed my own life. Is the book. So, I, I mean, you are saying you read the two. 
I was I still confused Abba. <laughs> so this life, some people, you know, they don't they don't need, you know. I, I've come to the like many years ago. Growing up as a young man, I have a lot of elderly people that are my friends that are older than me. So many years ago, maybe over 20 years ago, I went to a meeting to speak. And um, a friend of mine, elderly friend, is like 10 years older than me. Maybe maybe like 13 years. I think the guy is yeah, older than me. So he was, we were both speakers at the events. So I got there, finished speaking, and then we were now discussing. Ah, he said, ah, say, man. He said this in Yoruba. I said, ah. That means all these things you are doing. I envy you the way you are passionate, trying to help people, but you soon get tired. I say, I never, I can never be tired. He say, relax. He say, I've been there. He say, all these things you are doing. I used to do it when I was younger. You are passionate. You want to help people. So he say, let me ask you a question. He say, me and you, we have been together for a while. We have met in different meetings. He say, have you noticed? That every meeting we have gone to, we seem to be seeing the same set of people. Mm. They are always in every seminar and their life has not changed. Mm. You see, why do you think so? So I suddenly realized ah, it's true. You ah, have less. They are you see, they are taking notes, but they're not ready to take action. That is the problem. Where can people start taking action? You yeah, see, they are taking notes. notes, they are not ready to take action. See, so they will remain like that. You see, so you now, after you have thought and thought and thought, and their life has not changed, you say you'll be tired because you're like, ah, this thing when they work, why they work? And I, I right now, I'm not tired though, because I remember, but now when I got tired, I now realize that okay, when people don't pay, they don't pay attention. I now shifted my formula. Mm. That's so okay, all this free seven, I know they do again. I will do free, I will do paid, and I can stand before you and before God and before the whole world. Over 90% of everybody that has come to events mm. that I have done where they paid big money, mm. over 90% of them are millionaires or billionaires today. They took action. They because when you pay, you go take action. You don't get choice. If you pay $10,000 for a program, you go miss them. <laughs> but somebody can tell you, you got three minutes, they can register, you will call them and say, I'll be there. That day, they will not say, eh, they are traffic. Eh, it was really, but if you pay $10,000, even if your mama die, he goes still come finish the meeting before they go to bed. Yeah. Even if your wife they do CS, he goes say, babe, you know that seminar. Now today, born, I go see you later. <laughs> People are not serious. You are more passionate. I've been a pastor now. I've been in ministry for 34 years. I will do 35 years this year. Mm. I have seen people. This church, I've been pastoring this church for 29 years. There are people here, 29 years, nothing done change. They still did the same. Wow. And Nami, where everybody they celebrate all of that. Nami still be the pastor. They are hearing me every week, nothing change. And there are people here, two years, six months. Ah, since I came to this, is it that it's not me now, and it's not God, it is action. <laughs> so you take action when your why is strong enough. Hmm. You idea. take action when your why, why, why is strong enough. Is strong as enough. long as you still have somebody to borrow you money, somebody to drop your urgent 2k, your brain will go work. When you enter Wala, where you have nobody else, but when you are down to zero level, mm. where there's no way, your brain will work. Wow. We had a meeting one day my billionaire conclave, where I mentor my, my mentees. So I tell them to invite people so that they can come and be growing along. So they brought in this lady. When this babe enter, my brother, if you see head to toe, bone straight, rings, everything good, everything cha-cha-cha, mm. if we look the babe from head to toe, the babe will be like three million. Deco. So she was there, the one, you know, you can, the second, when evening session, another bag, you know, you know, smelling nice, you know that this one is correct. You see that this is money. Mm. Yes. So the next day, she now asked the question, she said, sir, that I've heard about you, that I know many people that have been talking about you, and then when my friends say, we should come, we should come, I'm like, ah, ah which one is billionaire's conclave? Mm. Are you telling me that when I go there, I'll just become a billionaire, that this money is much, I cannot be paying this kind of money? Mm. So, but because of my friend, I came. He says, when I came yesterday, I saw two people here that I know. Hmm. So he mentioned, he mentioned, he said, that one, I know we live on the same street. He said, as of five years ago, the guy is a poor man. I know him. I've given him money before. He said, and when I heard him yesterday talking billion, I said, ah. and I know he's not a fraud. I know he's not a fraud. I know him. I know his company. I'm part of his customer. So I'm like, wow, so these guys are making this kind of money. Hmm. See, so I now met him yesterday. He said, ah, that when I met this man, he said, so sir, but me, is it not the same Nigeria we are in? That you people are calling all this money you are calling? That me, the whole of last year, my turnover was less than 5 million. That's why ah, you are, is, is, ah, 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 you put doing it. So I now told her, I say, my sister, that when you came in yesterday, I saw you. Mm. 
the same way Jesus Christ said, a Nazarene whom there is no say, I saw you. Mm. <laughs> your deck. I say, everybody look at her. Look at my sister. See, as you deck. Mm. Look at your bag. That designer will see your shoe, see your wristwatch. Mm. Nobody, this one you wear yesterday. I mm. check you out. I say, we talk about you as I say, see this babe. We talk, you were, when you enter, we know say money don't enter. Yes. But you are now telling us now that you did not make five million last year. I so if you didn't make five million, where did you see money for all this since you are well? I said, so that means number one, you are married. Number two, your husband is rich. Number three, your husband is taking care of everything. He said, yeah, yeah. I said, so that's why you can't make it. Hmm. You have a husband that is decking you up. <laughs> paying school fees, paying rent. Right? Okay. Why should you make money? For what purpose? What is your why? That is true. That's yes, I, I say, if you are a single... Why? What is your why? Your why is not strong enough. I say, if you are a single parent with two children, with one useless man, where they beat you, slap you, we go get money carry side cheek. Mm -hmm. Your brain will work now. You will make 30 billion. You will make 100 because you know say if you don't pay school fees, the guy don't go pay. I so your why is not strong enough, so you can't make it. Wow. wow. So she now say, Are you saying that she not depend on my husband? Mm -hmm. I say, look, what I'm telling you is, he said, How can I now have a stronger why? I said, the only way you can have a stronger why mm -hmm. is move your attention from your husband to your children. And say, I want to hand over one billion each to my children. I said, when that becomes your wife, it becomes stronger than your husband's money. Wow. And that's how I was able to help her. That was 2021. Mm. Right now, this last year, she did 110 million wow. in less than two years. Wow. Why? Because now it's not about. Because once somebody is taking care of your needs, why do you need to labor? But she's not doing it for need now and survivor. It's like, this is my children. I want to give them one, one billion naira each when they are 21 years old. So she's working for a greater why. Wow. That's the way it works. Wow, wow. Interesting. Now, what, when it comes to limiting beliefs, there are most people that have some limiting beliefs disturbing them when it comes to, they want to achieve something, but some belief system is kind of hindering their progress. How can people go about breaking some limiting beliefs that is holding them from achieving some great impact? Okay, so information association. Those are, uh, there are many, but those are two things. The information you expose yourself to. So, start, af start exposing yourself to a different kind of information. So, to now bring a different kind of mindset, you need another set of information and another set of association. You cannot solve a problem at the level of intelligence you were in when you created the problem. Wow. So you need to move to another level of intelligence. So what's the information? So if when you were, the limiting belief is because you listen to your parents, your siblings, mm. your yes. environment, yeah. you're a useless man, mm. uh, forget it, yeah. fingers are not equal, mm. then you change the information you are getting. Start listening to people that will tell you everybody can make it. You see, many times people say, hey, this motivational speaker, mm, I want to again, again, I want to aspire to pass <laughs> But don't you want to be motivated? Don't. Yeah? don't you want to be motivated? Do you want to be demotivated? Mm. Everybody needs inspiration, we need motivation. The most important thing is after you are motivated, take action. Motivation is the motive that moves you to take action. So if you are motivated and you are not taking action, you have not done motivation. It's not complete. So motivation is, I say something that wakes up something inside you so that you can do what you need to do. Mm, so yes. there cannot be any external motivation yes. that can produce results without internal motivation. So what I'm doing is speaking to you to wake up the giant in you. Mm. If that giant does not wake up for you to take action, mm. so when you say motivational speakers are wrong, you are the wrong person. You are the unserious person because you are not responding. Like comedian will say, if I crack joke and you refuse to laugh, mm. it's not because I'm not funny. It's because your problem is too much. So you need a new set of information. Start reading books. Social media is awash with all kinds of information, good, bad, and ugly. Exactly. Why is it the bad one you are following? Exactly. On that same social media, people have gone to university on social media. Mm. They have gone to certification courses on social media. Mm. They are earning money legally on social media. You, you did there. Now who we'll break somebody's heart? Who we'll then serve breakfast? Now who we'll do this? Now you look. That is because of what you are hungry for. And what you are hungry for is what you will get. So change your information. Number two, change your association. There are some people that are supposed to just be an acquaintance. Mm. Hello, good morning, good morning. That's it. They are not supposed to say, that's my friend, that's my friend. Rich people don't have too many friends. It's poor people that gather friends like sand. Because for somebody to be qualified to be called your friends, mm. there must be something that you 
take them through call the screening process. So one thing that you need to understand is change your association. And that's what mentorship is all about. Mm. If you see anybody that is doing something good, something meaningful, get close to them. Ah, my brother, God bless you, sir. I just, brother, I like you. I like the way you go. So just mm. uh, any, any guidance you can give me, I want to be like you. Mm. Oh, okay, my brother, okay, read this book. They, they will begin to show you. There are people that want to help, but you are not willing to learn. Oh, yeah, oh gen okay. And can I send my account number? What's that? Mm. You don't even have strategy of impact. What if the association is people that are close to you that you cannot just discard? What do you do about you? What do you mean you can't discard? If you die, they don't go continue. You are is the, is the, that, that those kind of mindset that they put down for trouble. Who can't you discard? People people abandon their parents. No human being they use their parents to do ritual. If they never discard them, it's your mind. You can't discard. What can't you discard? You carry load will pass you. Anybody that is not useful to your life, put them in the outer court. That's why we have family and extended family extension. It's called extended family. You have nuclear family. You have personal, nuclear, extended. So why will you be extending what is not enough? Now, person, person whether they carry, you know, they carry person now. All this mindset, now they put out of trouble. People, you can't discard. If you die, they're not going to continue. Now, just fool yourself. Who, who can't you discard? All of you could have been now, now going to pull up together. Mm. Ah, for you to be free, to set other people free, you must set yourself free first. first Imagine all of us, they say, if I would drown, you know, you know, whole papa, whole mama. All of them are going to die. You could first escape, come out. Come out. Then you go begin put them out one by one. If they are escaping, create enmity between you and them. You just see. Poppers never create enmity. Who told you they love you now? It's just your mindset, my brother. Which enmity are you God? Jesus, the old Jesus, died for the old world, shed blood. They hate them. They hate them. Let me say now, uh, they're born again, they begin to sort me. Now, now, now. Why? The person where people say there is no God. God created you. You turn around and look the God say there is no God. Person where, is that not madness? But they will say that I'm mad now. That is the... You know, you know, my brother, don't waste your time. Or, you, know, you don't know who you came to see. Hey, look, I can tell you for free. Many of the problem in this world is in our mind. We are the one creating problem where there's no problem. The same people you are trying to help, mm. that you are saying they will hate you, they will hate you. When you use all your money to help them, and you end up poor, they will tell you, ah, what's your happened? Why did you become poor? They will blame you for being poor. Say, you made other one, you are just helping all. You didn't keep anything for yourself. They will blame you. So you are very stupid and foolish to be thinking that somebody will hate you for being yourself. No! And when you do that, you make it out, you make it, they will start coming back to you. They will come back. They will come back. So what you need to do is to set yourself free. And then when you set yourself free, you now start helping other people to become free. But helping is not undoubtable oh, because see, that's another part of the problem. You don't, because this, hey, I'm not a breadwinner, I don't blow, take, no, no. Helping them to be free is now calling them to say, guys, this is the information I discovered that has helped me. Let me take this book, go for this course, go for this seminar, learn so that you can know. Because if they are not who they are supposed to be, any help you give them mm. is going to bite you in the back. Why? The more you learn, the more you earn. Your earning capacity is determined by your learning capacity. If you know better, you will do better. So everybody has a level of money they can handle mm. based on their internal capacity. If you give anybody any money that is beyond their learning capacity, they will waste the money and reduce it to their level. So if somebody is a 500,000 dollar person, mm. that's his level. You should give him 5 million. He go do betting, he go give girlfriend money, he go buy I iPhone, I W I X, he go spend the money finished. Down, when he remain 500, 500. now he bring go begin work. Ah, he remain 500. Ah, what do I do now? You see that 4.5 is beyond this level. He go don't waste that first. Or till he get to the 500 level, that's why his brain will start working. It's like when you come out of, you know, bungee jumping, you jump out of plane. Yes. When they say, when you get to a level, you don't put parachute. Yes, put parachute. When you are at that level, you can't do parachute because your brain is not working. When you now put parachute, that's why you now, that's what happened. If that person is a 10 million naira person, if you give him 5 million, in less than one year, you will have 10 million. That 5 million will begin to grow. So you don't give people money, you give people knowledge. In this part of the world, we have messed up empowerment, empowerment. You see, politicians say they are empowering people. They are giving them money, giving them okada, giving them, is that empowerment? That's nonsense. You are giving people money, you call it empowerment. No, the real empowerment is knowledge. Giving them the knowledge of who they are, what they have, what they can do. So that with or without you, they can do it. But the problem is that some people will tell you they can be empowered with that knowledge, but they don't have anything financed to do something. That is what, that is, empowerment is not complete without equipping. Okay. So when you empower, we have just finished Entrepreneurship Academy here. Mm. On my table now, there is a file there of mm. people who are going to give money. We have trained them. Yes, sir, now. Okay. I will now say, we have 5 million, we are going to share. Okay. 50,000 minimum, 250 maximum. We give them the conditions and everything. Now, I have screened them now. 
I saw the list. So everybody that is asking for anything above 250, I've disqualified them. Because they are not serious people. We told you, the maximum you will get is 250. Yet, somebody is writing 3 million, I need 2.5. I say, these are the problem of Nigeria. So I don't disqualify all of them now. When you leave now, that's the next meeting I'm doing now. So anybody that asks for more than 250, I've disqualified them. Mm. Because I told you, the maximum anybody can get is 250. Yet, you still say, you go still ask for more. That means you are a greedy person. That's why they sign mm. money where they won't give you free. Nobody say you nobody you get them or you still say you can just ask for anything. Mm. All of them are disqualified. So those people that are 250 and below, we're gonna now call them today now, fix appointment. So that's the way this thing works. If you understand true empowerment, you give people information and then you give them equipping to carry it out. So when you say your family member, you call them, ah, my brother, God has helped me. Over the years, this so I would like you to read this book, do a summary, chapter mm. by chapter, mm. submit it to me. Mm. Then um, there's this course I've registered for you to go. Mm. Go there, gather then let me know what you want to do. Mm. Give me a proposal. What would you like to do in your life? Mm. Let me know. Then all of them will go, go, go. All this process may take three to six months. Mm. The serial, some people say, What does that? Because you don't get money now. Nah. You go, wait, wait, I don't for school. Yes. You already know they are not qualified for your money. Cast not your peers before swine. Mm. Whether it's your father, mother, brother, sister, whether it's biology, forget that nonsense. Mm. Jesus Christ said, Who is my brother? Who is my mother? Mm. Nobody. Nobody. It is those that obey me Nobody. and do my work. Those are my father. That's my mother. That's my brother. Let's stop all this nonsense that is killing us. <laughs> By the time you do that, some people will get angry. Well, I'm even older than him. Mm. It's controlling. That means they are not qualified for your money. How do you keep money to people like that? Then those that go through the process, when they now come, you now tell them, Look, this money, how much do you think you will need? I need two million. I mean, well, okay, now you say you need two million. You okay? I'm going to give you five million. Mm. Since then, you need two million. Two million is too much. I'm going to give you five. But that five million, I will give you over the next five years. So take one million. Let's go and test. Wow. One year, give me a report every three months. In one year, let's see how far it goes. Yeah, because he knows, say mm. one one million day for the next Different five years. Price. That one million not go finish. That's true. It go multiply. It go multiply. But when you give him five million, pa, it go finish. If I if I show you my phone now, I could see one man now. He has sent me like yesterday like twelve text messages. Mm. He has sent like seven. I've counted now. I, I'm that. I've counted. I'm waiting that when he don't do thirty, mm. I wait because he's still sending. When he now I will now copy the old thirty and send that thirty text back to him. Pa. <laughs> Why is he sending me text? I don't know him. I know about him. He introduced himself that I was in one of your seminars. I need help. And, and, and the way me, I operate. Mm. If you say something like, you are my only hope, one couple will not come out of my pocket because God mm. is the only hope of everyone. I be allowed to say hope 93. You see, I hand. Mm. This one, I don't say renew hope. See, I hand. Anything that you are putting hope, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Any human being that wants to take it the place of God, they will end up in shame. For you to tell me I'm your only hope. Don't be, I, I don't have any money. Anything I have, now God give me. I don't go... So this guy wrote, I just need help. And, mm. and he asked for money. I gave him double of what he asked for because I was just led to say, help him. Mm. So I sent to him. Mm. Ah, so when I sent to him, this is a very funny story. If I'm, I'm planning a message around this story now because this is a human being. Yeah. So when I, he sent me the message by text message mm. and also send it by WhatsApp. And I don't do WhatsApp. But because I was not in the country when he did it, I had to now do WhatsApp. So I now send the money to him and now told him through whatsapp that it has been sent that i've sent something to him mm. so by the time i will check later mm. he has sent me another email that please i'm waiting to hear from you and i said i've already sent you the money since like four hours ago mm. and check your whatsapp mm. so he now sent thank you sir that was it then yesterday morning mm. Sir, that money you sent to me, uh, this and this, I just need this extra one now. Please, I'm very sorry. It was for the last time. Mm. So I didn't answer him. Because that is the problem. Somebody you don't know from anywhere gave you double what you asked for. Thank All you, you said was time. thank you. Now you are now asking for another last time. Because me, I don't have family. I don't have anything to do with you know, money. You know, and you know, said, I'm a you. So I just said, these, these are the people that spoil people. So I didn't answer him. I've not answered since yesterday. Mm -hmm. He now started sending, please, sir. I know. Just help me this one. He has been sending it. Now he don't. I'm telling you, I'm like number 17 now. He leveled yesterday. I realized they don't send seven today. The same thing. Thinking, say, maybe, in go, we really, okay. the man with us, I say, not today. We have been around for a while. Yeah. Okay, we, we, we. 
comes to business, people, like you say, when you empower people and people get into business, you know, it's one thing to hear the theory of business, it's another thing to enter the practical world, because practical world will give you all the blues that you need to experience. Now, how do you handle failure in business when people get into business and they express one or two failures? There's some failure that can shatter you and you've come down, you're not able to come up again. How do you handle failure in business? Okay, you are not a failure until you stop trying. Uh, most of what we call failure is not really failure. It's, you see, most of the time, our definition is the problem. And when I speak like this, people are like, ah, how does he have this kind of wisdom? Now, so far, I don't suffer. When you don't suffer, you go learn. So, I used to think like, oh, this way you are thinking. That's why I can tell you for free, oh, this is, there's nothing called failure. Because I've been there. Do you understand now? There's nothing called failure. You don't lose money, you pay school fees lose money. You pay school fees. It's an expensive school fees. It's called the school of life. When you go to school, you don't pay school fees. In life, you have to fail to pay school fees. It's school fees. It's the, it's the lecture that life teaches you to become better than what certificate gave you. So you need to... So there's nothing called failure. It's our mindset. It's the way we see things. So when you go into business, anybody will tell you theory and practical are two different things. That's why we have what we call a business plan, a feasibility study to see how, let's see how we can manage whatever. So once you are going in and you understand the right way to be done, when you experience something contrary to your expectation, which is what we call failure, mm -hmm. you learn from it. Why did it happen? What could I have done differently? How can I make a change? When you do that learning, you go back again. Mm -hmm. You get a better result. So sometimes you will do it over and over again before you now stabilize. Mm -hmm. But those repeated doing is what makes you the kind of person that can continue to produce that result. So whatever you have experienced in life, rise up and try again. Learn the lesson. But if you don't learn that lesson, it will happen again. Mm. But if you learn the lesson, when it's happening again, mm. it won't be as bad as the former one. You'll be better. And then you'll be tweaking it. Did we not hear that this light all of us are using now, the guy that did the light failed, maybe 10,000 or whatever. Mm. But now, are we calling this failure? So you have to keep trying. You are not a failure until you stop trying. The day you say, I know they do again, that's when you fail. As long as you keep trying, think about it. The creator built a hack and said that all the animals will be brought in two by two, male and female. The cheetah made it, the lion made it, the elephant made it, the tiger made it, everybody made it. The snail also made it, the tortoise also made it. The slowest animals made it. Why? The only way the snail and the tortoise can make progress is by sticking their head out of their shell not by burying their head in the sand. As long as you stick your head out and you keep pushing, it's only a matter of time you'll get there. So don't be in a hurry. Stay faithful, stay focused. Stay faithful, stay focused. Stay faithful, stay focused. Before you know it, slow and steady. One day, you'll just discover that you're on the other side. Now, if somebody at this point in time is on ground zero, I mean, the person is even confused, doesn't even know where to start coming out from, what to start doing at this moment. If you find yourself in that position, you're on ground zero, you don't know, maybe you don't even know what, where your next move will come from. And you don't know where to start from. What are the steps you can tell the person to start? In, from? in, in Yoruba, one o, logo o, to lay on. When we say grand zero is relative, grand zero financially is not grand zero mentally, is not grand zero relationally, is not grand zero physically. It's our mindset, my brother. Hey, grand zero, grand zero. You don't get money. It means you don't get friends. You don't get family. The same man with the grand zero, I go get go get girlfriend. Want to do totally, and he did grand zero. Why are we fooling ourselves? It's because in your mind. Say, I did grand zero, I don't get money, you don't have money, you don't get brain. You will be, for you to even be able to think that you are in grand zero, that means you have enough sanity to make money. Mm. <laughs> do you know that in this country, people are living under the bridge in wooden houses and they didn't bump again. And they have been there for 15 years, they don't bump, people don't graduate, and yet you, you are saying, what grand zero are we talking about? It's our mindset. It's, if, it's, when your mind and your spirit is in grand zero, you are finished. But when your finances is in grand zero, mm. you can come out with relationship. You can come out with a skill. You can come out with impact. You can come out with maximizing opportunity. You can come out with energy. You did grand zero. If you go market now to begin book truck, you're not going to make money. Mm. But that person will see grand zero. They're proud and arrogant. Mm. I can't do that. Uh, it's below my level. You did poor. You see, they proud. <laughs> so I beg, people are not serious. <laughs> what if it's mental grand zero, like you said? The person is confused mentally, don't know the next step. If you are a mental grand zero relational, mm. We help you because that is where the mental grand zero you get friend, you get father, mother, brother, sister. Even if you don't get anybody, you get people well over the grand zero together. That relationship, say, My brother, I don't tire, mm. I feel like committing suicide as I did. So, as you share, cry for help, mm. help will come, and then something will happen. 
How do you differentiate a fixed mindset from a growth mindset? Uh, you look at the trajectory of the life. Because if a mindset is growing, the person will grow. But if a mindset is fixed, the person will be fixed. So if you see somebody in the same bus stop, the same level over and over again is because the mindset has not changed. And I can, you see, I'm a pastor, so there is no way all the principles I share, they are from Bible. So from time to time, I need to help people know, say, this Bible powerful. So all those people that say they don't believe in God, mm. they're just a fool. Mm. They're a bloody fool. That's why the Bible says the fool have said in his heart there is no God. Mm. A man inside Bible, he stayed in the same place for 38 years. 38 years, he sit down there, and that. Jesus also finally can say, my brother, why are you here 38 years? Mm. He said, nobody to help me. That's the mindset. Why do you want somebody to help you? Why can't you help me? He said, there's nobody here to help me. I'll be here for 38 years. The person will go up and not come home. Instead of him to, to he begin complain, blaming everybody. Because <laughs> excuses are the trademarks of failures. Mm. When people succeed, they take responsibility. When they fail, they look for somebody That's to blame. Easy. That's why we are here. He said, God said, that we are now. He says, the woman you gave me, oh. He got to the woman. He said, why did he say, is this happened to God? didn't go to the devil because he already said, you, you have missed it. So, as far as I'm concerned, we are the one just undoing ourselves. We are not serious. If we are serious, many of the things we are calling problem have been there in this same Lagos. I've done all kinds. We've done concrete. We've done decking work. We've gone to cut grass. We have a hand going to Bista. I've worked in factory, which we never do. You have to be ready to do something. And don't just sit down expecting that somebody will come and give you an handout. So and when you say everything, do something, do something, people might just look for a, a different ways for what they can do. Now, how do you discourage some youth from engaging in, in Yahoo, Yahoo, went from fraudulent ways to make money or prostitution and all of that look, because of the country and what things is happening? Let me tell you something. Yes. I've been around. If you like, talk from morning to night. Person will go bad, go bad. Until people have an encounter with God. There is no advice that they will take. In my day, in my place, one in my loot over my son, I jat over my son, could the buffet a lot there. The dog will go lost, no go hear the whistle of the owner. So, what I have always done is this I will tell you the truth, I will tell you what not to do, and I will pray for you that you will not enter trouble. Because if you choose that that's the way you want to go, no problem. One day, one day, you go learn, but may not be too late. But please help me do the research. Do you know anybody in this world that is a successful Yahoo that has done Yahoo and then in children take over the Yahoo, the third generation, and they have a generation of Yahoo and they are still alive doing Yahoo, generation to generation. Do you know anybody today that is a prostitute? When we say the grandmama and a prostitute, mm. the mama and a prostitute, let them come and teach us if you have any example like that. Why are they not track record of evil? Mm. Mm. Why don't they have books? Why don't they have master classes mm. on how to be a generational prostitute? Mm. It's because all these things, those are, even people that say they are atheists, when they want to die, they will believe in God. And the people that read their book will still say there is no God. But as the person will tell you say there is no God, when they die, he don't believe God. But you know, you know, get the latest manifesto. You are still working with expired syllabus. <laughs> so anybody out there doing evil, Jesus Christ said as I close. He that is doing evil, continue to do your evil. He that is doing good, continue to do your good. He said, but I am returning with judgment to give every man according to the work of his hand. Just know that that evil you are doing, there is going to be a report card one day and it's judgment. So if you like, change. If you like, don't change. We'll see one day. <laughs> okay, show how people can be able to reach out to get your books, contact you and all that thing that they may want to reach out to. Hello, how there? It's Olumide Imano. We've been having an amazing time on Selah Meditate. And I believe that you've gotten some very massive information that will help you. If you want to get in touch with me, follow me on all my social media platforms. On Instagram and on X, Twitter, you meet me at Olumid Emmanuel. Olumid Emmanuel. And on Facebook, it's Olumide.Emmanuel. On YouTube, at Dr. Olumide Emmanuel. And if you want to get any of my materials, go to my website, www.olumideemmanuel.org. When you get to olumideemmanuel.org for mentorship, you have a click. For books, you have a click. For all the events, you have a click. And then we would love to be of help to you in any way. Keep your dream alive, guys. So that is it, guys, with my powerful guest, Dr. Olumide Emmanuel. I believe you have been highly impacted on this episode. I know this this episode definitely is going to impact a lot of people. So this is the first time I'm coming to the channel. Do wait to hit the subscribe button, share this video, like it, 
and turn on post notification. Make sure you share this video. My name is Benzik. And do well to thank our guest, Dr. Olumide Imani. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you for everything. Thanks for having me. So that's it, guys. My name is Benzik, and I'll see you again next time. Cheers.